All right, so we're going to cross now to Martin King uh, from the biggest and gayest winter alpine party, which is on in Queenstown as we speak. And Martin, uh, I hear you're a bit restricted on time, so we'll keep this brief. Kia ora, uh, Leon. Uh, no, we're all good to go. Oh, fantastic. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Well, yeah, so we were going to chat last week, but actually I'm kind of glad we're chatting today because the, the angle last week was, was was a little bit negative, and we might touch on that at the end. That was the Southern Health Board press release. Mm. But just just let's talk about the, let's talk about the good stuff. So how, how is everything going, and what are the numbers like visiting this year? Well, um, I would say so far um, exceeding expectations in, in every respect. Um, just, yeah, people <laughs> crawling out of the woodwork um, okay. everywhere. It's, it's fabulous um, seeing uh, queer couples walking down the streets holding hands and getting off planes, and I think this is potentially going to be a record festival for sure. You know, I was at Gadroni yesterday and I saw so many people wearing capes and, and, and rainbow colours and even, it was kind of cute, like there were lots of people getting, even kids were doing it and obviously, you know, they're not here for the festival but it was a, it was a lovely, kind of friendly, uh, open feeling and it uh, was super colourful, great, it, everything looked great on the mountain, you know, seeing the rainbows everywhere. Yeah, absolutely, and we've got eight days of that, um, you know, and it actually just builds and builds and builds into this, you know, this weekend, so what you saw yesterday was really just a taste and a bit of a start, so, um, and, and I think that's one of the other things with the festival, and, and uh, you know, coming back to your comment about the the press release was, you know, our festival is actually about um, community, and it's about, you know, um, in safe and inclusive and welcoming events, which are for everyone, it's not actually <clears throat> necessarily about um you know, some of the comments that were made, which I thought were quite stigmatising, potentially, of what Pride festivals are about. Mm. Um, so what you saw on the mountain yesterday is exactly what we're about, um, bringing families together and people together to celebrate diversity and inclusion. Well, yeah, that's right. And, you know, the press release, I'll just fill people in a wee bit. So it was um, the Southern Health Board. And, and you know, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, it seemed... It seemed uh, like a very retrograde kind of step in many ways, and and poss- I, th- I think I think they'll probably f- be regretting that. But it was saying that it was saying yes, hey, you know, welcome everyone, but just remember to keep safe, and you know, there's the monkeypox risk, and that seemed to be really um, detrimental, I think, to <laughs> to to a lot of things, into the progress, into the, into the headway that we've made in so many areas. So I can see why that. What was your feeling when you when you read that? What what did you think? Well, well, the first thing is, you know, Winter Pride's going ahead and it's going to be fabulous and amazing. And, um, you know, as we just discussed, um, hopefully the a record um, numbers for Queenstown and, and Wanaka in the region. Um, I was disappointed in, in that we weren't aware that there was a press release going out, um, would be my comment, first and foremost. And then second mm. um, was, was, you know, that um, the, the information that was put in there was potentially stigmatising. And we're no different from any other event happening around the country right now, um, or events, you know, particularly happening in Auckland or Wellington. Um, and, you know, I think um, targeting a festival that's about celebrating pride <clears throat> is, 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 um, is yeah, very narrow. And I think they, they need to really come out clearly around what is their message about monkeypox? What are they doing about monkeypox? What are they going to do in terms of supporting vaccine? nations um, and have a broader public health message would be um, certainly what I would like to see from the Ministry of Health. I hear you because really there was nothing positive or nothing to address. It was more like, it was more, uh, it was just awful really. It just actually left a bad taste to be honest because it you just know, we, and we like, were really, yeah, yeah we yeah, totally. I mean, we're really proud of what we have done. We've we've actually worked with Burnett Foundation as our partner. Um, that Burnett Foundation used to be called Indian HIV. You're probably familiar with them. Um, we've yes. stepped up our whole website with information about that. We've worked with Queensland Medical Centre, who actually are offering free testing um, and support for anyone who may have symptoms. Um, we have flyers and, and posters and information handouts, and we've been um, driving messaging through email and social media. So we've certainly done that um, with Burnett Foundation with their support and and in fact, I think we're probably um, going above and beyond potentially what um, we need to be doing. But our, our priority is keeping our guests safe um, and healthy and doing everything we can to do that. But mm. equally getting on and having a bloody fabulous time. Yeah, totally. And the weather has been <laughs> unbelievable. Like, I, heard, oh. you know, a lot of people are commenting on this and just saying, oh, we're loving this. They're, you know, they're enjoying the experience. Do you know, though, Leanne, I, I honestly think it happens every single year with Winter Pride. You get this... 
you know, weather comes through, we get these good snow dumps, and then literally the, the sun turns on. Um, but what I'm hoping for is maybe on Sunday this week, the sun turns off and we get snow, snow. and it turns into beautiful winter wonderland. That would, be, that would be sort of like the icing on the cake. Oh, wouldn't it? It'd be beautiful. And I just want to talk about some of these events because, honestly, the work that goes into the you know, the, the week and, and the sorts of things that are, that are put on are incredible. So, so this Wednesday, we've got the, the Pride Wine Tour, yeah, and then a rooftop yep. party. Where, yes. Where's the wine tour ta- take people? Is it just in so, Queensland um, proper? No, so the wine, no, it's actually out and about. So we have um, two vans um, heading out. So they go to Gibson Valley, which obviously um, you'll be familiar with. Beautiful, and I know they're flying the rainbow flags out there already. Yeah, they and it are. goes to um, Mount Rosa um, in Gibson Valley and to Wet Jacket. So those three um, wineries, and they're all Pride Pledge um, supporting organisations. So they're really committed to rainbow inclusion all year round and work with us. So that's that one. And then Rooftop is at the Sun Deck, which you're probably familiar with, the Queensland sort of most exclusive mm. rooftop venue. And it's just... We've been up there every night this week and it's just spectacular looking out over the lake and the mountains and the sunset. So that's going to be, um, yeah, an awesome new event actually um, on our schedule. Yeah, great. What about Queenstown's Got Talent? This sounds lots of fun. Oh, oh it's been, we added it to the festival five years ago. Mm. And one of the reasons we did that is we really wanted to develop um, LGBT talent locally and not just import talent from Sydney and Melbourne and, and Auckland and Wellington, which is what we'd sort of relied on. Um, it's been hugely successful. So we're seeing local drag queens and local dancers and performers take the stage with international performers. And I think it's just really uh, creating a, a, um, a, really, a really wonderful queer art scene mm. um and we can create a platform so local performers look forward to it every year and it's just a hoot it's just, yeah it I'm, would be can't uh, wait yeah a hoot is yeah, it yeah 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 it would be and, and and it's just about losing your inhibitions and uh and you know some in some ways queenstown encourages that because it's such a creative beautiful place that i think people do let go a bit and they really they just go with them go with the flow yeah, well, I, what I would sort of say about this year, it, it's been a nice reminder because obviously we've had two years of hibernation slash disruption, let's call it, is um, just the energy that our guests bring here. They, Everyone, you know, 98% of our guests are from out of town, you know, across Australasia from Broome to Darwin to, you know, to Wollongong to, mm. and then Kaitaia to, you know, Wanganui or and everything in between and there's just this energy of people getting on planes and coming here to just have a fabulous time and um, and make the most of it and you can sort of feel it, it's quite electric um, and it is a bit about letting go of those inhibitions and um, yeah, Queenstown I think is a special place and I think people, whether it's Pride or not love being here but I think during Pride there's just that something extra that we deliver and people leave with, you know, memories for life. I, I think so. And, you know, it can only, it's only good for the town. The only worry, I guess, is, Martin, in a way, is, is, you know, I've had someone on earlier today talking about the staffing shortage, and I just hope that people are getting the experience that, that they expect because, you know, everyone's been impacted and we can't get people to, you know, to, to yeah. run some of these things. But I imagine that the people you're working with have allowed for this and they'll be you know, they'll be compensating for, for this week and having extra people with any luck. Yeah, look, it's definitely the biggest challenge we face this year, for sure. Um, you know, no one that we talk to will say any different. Um, what we're really seeing, though, is our partners, and we work with a massive range of businesses across the region. They're just all pulling together. Um, we had our opening party at Lone Star the other night, and he, you know, the, the owner had his neighbour and um, someone from our tech company and um, their friends, and they just pulled together and yeah. were the most amazing team. I was clearing glasses. Um, one of our team was doing security. We just all stepped up and we made it happen. So yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that, but it's not without, you know, pressure and without, you know, um, real strain, I think, particularly on business owners um, who are literally sweeping floors and cleaning glasses at the moment. Mm, I know, it's so tough. And that's who we talked to, the Lone Star owner, Dave Gardner. And he was saying how stressful it is. And I said, you know, Lone Star is like, it's what everyone loves about Queenstown. It's the essence of Queenstown. It's a cool place to go. So I think I think it's fantastic that you were you were in there and uh, and supporting him and being, you know, and and we're all we're all trying to act normal, aren't we? We're all we're all trying 
trying to <laughs> just sort of just to get back into it and start celebrating life again. So, so I suppose Pride is all, is all about that, and it's been it's been a nice sort of um, punctuation for a year in a way, Martin, as well. Yeah, yeah, I I think so. And um, but look, I think the, you know that this challenge with staffing shortage for Queenstown, I think it's particularly extreme. I mean, we we experience it all over the country, and I think from hearing talk, people travel, it's happening all over the world. But I I do think for Queenstown, they you know it's an opportunity for them to really think about you know how they can long term address some of these issues that have been around for a long time. Um, in some way, because you know, it's um, this is a place where people want to come. The pressure is going to continue to, to to stay around tourism. Um, so it's you know, if there was a good opportunity for businesses to really look hard about how they adapt to address some of their staffing issues, I'd put that challenge out to them. Now's a good time. I, th- I think so, and they're saying, like, the problem is, is that it's very hard to sort of see, you know, where, where the end is in sight, but. You know, things are happening, and they will, and uh, and surely by the time this roll, I mean, because the, you'll be back again next year, won't you, doing it all again this time of year? Yeah, thank, thanks, Leanne. I'll, I'll address that one when I get through this one, though. No, <laughs> no, I don't mean... Um, I mean, I'm hoping by the time you get back next year that we won't be talking about this oh, issue. Yeah, Do you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you can well, sort no, it out, yeah, Martin, no. yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll get out my magic wand. No, yeah, I, I would hope so. But, you know, certainly there's some other, you know, bigger strings that need to be pulled at an immigration and government level to, to, to support businesses down here. Um, but, yeah, look, if, if nothing else, I always say that resilience will get you, get you everywhere. And I think certainly this town has proved that it is resilient because it is bouncing back, tourism's bouncing back, and, and these business owners are pulling all strings to, to really, you know, still showcase, you know, their very, very special part of the world. Oh, totally, 100%. And you are getting great feedback from people who've come here? From, uh, you know. Oh, 100%. Oh, the so. amount of, we, we, call them, we call them Winter Pride virgins. Um, maybe is not an appropriate term, but, <laughs> you know, I've just met so many people from, I mean, particularly Australia, from Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane and Perth. It's never been to New Zealand before. They, you know, and then they've arrived in Queenstown for Winter Pride and like, oh. we came for Winter Pride, we're here, and this is just blowing our minds. So, oh, great. yeah, I think... Um, yeah, so the feedback's great so far. Um, and I think, you know, people are on holiday, so fingers crossed they're a little bit relaxed about wait times and service. I, I um, think you know, so. And understanding. Yeah. Because that's what Dave's worried about. He said, you know, we, we, he, he was like, we're losing our mana. You know, he was like, oh, I don't want people to go home, you know, and, and, and particularly to Australia and go, oh, look, you know, we couldn't get service. It was dreadful. But I think, you know, look, um, whenever I've been in town recently, there's been a fantastic vibe and it is, it's, going off it's really pulsating with people and, that, mm. and that's great to see isn't it yeah and look we we went to, we had our um opening pride dinner last night at blue canoe and the team there sensational they just absolutely delivered great service um did everything they could to look after us and it was full and and uh, you know we had a group of nearly 60 people you know with mm. one you know one service to to bring out and and they did um were, were flawless so mm. you know i think um yeah businesses are pulling out all stops and yeah anyway we're, we're excited about the rest of the week to come and um yeah yeah we said I, I always say to people my biggest advice of coming to enterprise is it's a marathon <laughs> definitely not a sprint or maybe it's a series of short sprints because um, we're really only in the early part of the festival. We've got right, right through to all Sunday to get through. So. That's right. So pace yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's lots to do. And look, there's plenty of time and you can. I mean, that's the thing. If you just want to go and hang out in your room, that's totally fine. But you just know that everything's on your doorstep and it's all waiting for you. And when you're ready, you know, you don't have to be up the mountain and doing every everything every day. But there is a lot on. <laughs> there's a lot to get through. Yeah, there, there is. Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm sitting here at the helm just to tell you, trying to keep it steady. Keep it together. And, uh, as yeah. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep it to you. Yeah. Hey, well, Martin... Um, and you probably you know. can tell I'm losing my voice a bit, so that bit's definitely starting to to, to, to um, have an impact um, so far. But, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Oh, listen, thank you so much, and well done for, for bringing it all together in such a brilliant way, and uh, have a fantastic week. Thank you so much. Talk soon. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Martin. Martin King from uh, Pride uh, in Queenstown, which is going off at the moment. And uh, there's nowhere you look that you can't see evidence of uh, this particular festival, which has been on hiatus for a couple of years and and now back. And uh, it's great that Queenstown businesses are welcoming everyone here. Uh, Yeah. And... uh, 
yeah, they'll be. This will be an annual thing, and uh, barring some other major world drama. So yeah, good to talk to Martin.